Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another video in this one, my friends, I'm going to be testing the Minis Forum HX100G Mini, I mean, small gaming PC. <laughs> so this little thing packs quite a bit of power, my friends. And yes, that's what she said. I needed it, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of the best small gaming PCs that I have tested here in the channel. It has a Ryzen 7 7840HS processor with 8 cores and 16 threads, 32GB of DDR5 5600MHz RAM in dual channel, a 1TB SSD, and the star of the show, the dedicated AMD Radeon RX 6650M graphics card, which is basically an RX 6600 desktop GPU with slightly lower TDP and clock speed. That's pretty impressive that they fit one of these inside, right? Now, unfortunately, guys, this thing won't be cheap. It is 1,019 euros at the moment on sale. So this is probably a bit overpriced. Obviously, it's less portable than a laptop, right? You don't have the screen, the keyboard, the mouse. So yeah, I, I think... Minis Forum and actually all of the mini PC manufacturers need to start dropping their prices a little bit because, you know, to be more competitive with laptops. But something that this actually bits a laptop in is in the cooling solution. It's pretty good here. It doesn't really reach high temperatures compared to a gaming laptop at least. And it stays pretty quiet when gaming. So that's pretty nice. But hey, that's enough intro. Let's go play some games on this thing, shall we? Let's start with Cyberpunk 2077, guys, and we're playing this one with some motion blur at the moment. I will change that in a little bit, okay? <laughs> but we're playing at 1080p resolution using high settings preset. I will disable resolution scaling right here, so FSR is turned off now, and I will also disable these options here, which are ugly, and they don't really impact your FPS by much. If you want to enable them, feel free to do so. And as you can see, we're getting around 60-ish frames per second. It's definitely going to dip into the 50s sometimes especially if you play in the dlc but uh, i'm not playing in the dlc because uh, well a lot of people might actually not play the dlc you know so this is the base game we're going to a very intensive area as well and it seems like it's holding up extremely well actually for a mini pc or a small pc <laughs> right it's not really that mini this one uh, it's performing really really well i think i could play the game all day long like this 60-ish frames per second. We got a little stutter there, but that's because of the auto-saving feature in this game. But yeah, overall, the gameplay is really smooth. You can kill Bob. Goodbye, Bob. There we go. Wait, is he dead? He's not dead. Bob, please just die. Come on. There we go. I think he's dead now. <laughs> yes. Good stuff, finally. And now we got the police after us. Of course we do. <laughs> Dipping down into the 50s around here, as you can see, it's a very intensive area. CPU usage is going up to like 70% at times, 75% right there. Wait. So yeah, it can get really CPU intensive, but it seems like the 7840HS can handle its own above 60 FPS all of the time here and not bottleneck the 6650M. And the GPU itself is also doing a really fine job guys moving on to the next game Next up is Counter-Strike 2, we're playing at 1080p resolution using the high settings with no anti-aliasing. Alright guys, as usual I will be playing a little bit of a deathmatch right here to see what we can do if we can finish first place, you know. But going by the FPS, they're very okay, you know, it's not super super high FPS that we're getting right here, it's actually CPU bound at the moment, but it's totally fine. If you wanted more frames per second, you could definitely have it with low settings. You know, ease that CPU bottleneck a little bit. But yeah, it performs very well. No stuttering issues, which is nice to see. It shouldn't really have it because it's the source engine too, not Unreal. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Good stuff. Let's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Why'd you spawn there? Okay, I got him up from behind. Seriously. Oh boy, oh boy, that was close. That was very close. But he's all good because he missed. Let's see. Okay, another one down. And there's another one here. All right, thank you for the kill. And also, guys, since the... Wait, hello. Uh, since the... There we go. Oh, that was nice. 
the competitive mode is actually less CPU intensive because it has less people playing it. It's only like a 5v5, right? This is way more people in the server. It's gonna be less CPU bound and therefore get more FPS as well and more GPU utilization. And there we have it, my friends. We didn't get first place. What? Who is this guy? I clearly got first place, like... Seriously? Okay, last test of CS2 is to throw the smoke right here, make it GPU bound, as you can see, but it's not really dropping too much from what we saw previously during the deathmatch and throwing a grenade, in a gr grenade inside of it. <laughs> drops us into like the one teens basically so it actually dropped more probably once or twice during the death match not a big deal it's still very stable even with these effects on screen but now let's play the last of us part one a really intensive game we're playing at 1080p using no fsr and the medium settings preset with high textures over here all right here we go guys it's getting 90s 80s right here 70s but now comes the real challenge and it dips slightly <laughs> it dips into the 50s over here and there are a couple of more areas inside of this game where it's gonna dip sometimes so yeah it's not gonna be a stable 60 plus fps experience all of the time just like cyberpunk wasn't but i don't think it's a bad experience anyways it still looks decent enough on medium settings especially with the high textures it doesn't look anything special you know this game on ultra is absolutely gorgeous this is just it's okay Moving on to the second part of the benchmark run, I'll start counting our FPS. The frame time graph is actually surprisingly smooth. I, I thought we'd see a couple of bigger spikes sometimes, but it apparently doesn't really happen. Also around here, lower 50s, guys. Okay, 54, 50, 50, 50 flat. All right, that's pretty intensive. I think the ambient occlusion is a little bit exaggerated here on medium settings, especially around people. Like, it doesn't feel very nice or look very nice. It kind of reminds me of the AO in uh, Far Cry 3. Still, again, it's medium settings. It's smooth and playable. It gets 69 on average. Well, now it dropped. <laughs> uh, and it drops into the 40s sometimes around here. And it's actually surprisingly close to the GTX 1080 Ti right here, but this is only consuming 80 watts of power on the GPU. Uh, so that, that's impressive, right? The Apex Solendario is up next, my friends, and we're playing this one at 1080p resolution using the high settings, aside from this one, which introduces stuttering when it's maxed out. Okay, 120 FPS while looking at the entire map is pretty promising, guys. Gonna start counting the frames and... Uh, okay, good, 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 good. My favorite weapon right away. Nice, this shotgun. No, it's not. That's, that's not my favorite. Come on, come on. Oh, he's leaving grenades behind. Come on. Okay, I got him. I got him. Actually, shotgun ain't too bad. Oh, no. Okay, let's see if this time I'm not the first one to die. I would like to utilize my ultimate, okay? At least give me that game. <laughs> uh, all right, nothing for us right here. Inside it goes up to like 200-ish frames per second, but the thing about this game is it's a little bit inconsistent. You can be getting like 200 frames and then you look at somewhere else. Oh boy. Oh, grenade, grenade. No, 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 no. We don't like grenades. Okay, yeah. Um, and you get way lower FPS, like 100 FPS. Yes, less. It's that insanely inconsistent. I'm just gonna go this way, yeah. Really smooth experience, flat frame time graph, which is very important and uh, very welcomed in games. There are plenty of games that stutter a lot and they're never fixed. I guess the developers of those games, <coughs> Fortnite, they probably think that it's a feature and people like it, right? That's why they don't do anything to fix that crap. Uh, but I don't like it. I prefer it this way. Like, look at those 1% lows. They're so good. <laughs> And I'm gonna throw the ultimate, a couple of smokes at the same time. Look at that, make it really intensive. And it is dropping into the one teens now, and with the explosions, it drops to around 90 frames per second. It can actually be a competitive experience even on the high settings, and of course, if you want it to be even more stable than that, there's always low settings for you to play with. Next is the beautiful Red Dead Redemption 2. We're playing at 1080p resolution using the custom hardware unboxed optimized settings. These are optimized for the best visuals to performance ratio, basically. Oh yes, look at how beautiful 
beautiful this game is. It's a bit blurry though, not gonna lie, because of the TAA implementation in this game. It's not great, but if you disable it, it becomes a shimmery mess. So I guess I, I, I just set the TAA too high. It looks okay. And the FPS are very high indeed. And that frame time is buttery smooth. This is amazing, guys. I wish, I wish all of the games today were this optimized because half of them don't look anywhere near as good as Red Dead Redemption 2 does and yet 90% of them run worse. Can we find Jack today? I don't think so because I'm not hearing him right now. Also foresty area dropping things into the 80s but at this point with this kind of performance I think even 1440p will be doable. What am I hearing? Hello? Hello? Oh it's the O'Driscolls! It's the damn O'Driscolls! Or Bobs! Okay, these are the bobs of this world, my friend. We need to kill them all. Kill the Bob Bob Briscolls. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Reload, Arthur. Reload. Only one Bob left to go. Oh my God! What the hell, Roach? Are you trying to kill me as well? Why? Didn't do anything to you, boy. Come over here. God damn, Bob Briscolls. Get everything that they have. They only have bullets, apparently. Oh, silver pocket watch, never mind. Ah, here we have it, my friends. Strawberry Town. And here we're dropping into the 80s and high 70s. But I mean, uh, this game can be played with like 40 plus FPS. I'd be fine with that at least. 60 plus FPS is a, an awesome experience in Red Dead Redemption 2 and other single player titles like it. And basically, we're getting 75 plus so it's absolutely perfect it's gonna feel really smooth on a high refresh rate monitor you can see it right here it's not dropping can we go please roach gosh what the heck is going on this guy is so slow as well and there's a little fox around here yes yes i saw it i saw come over here fox hello how are you going <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay, now we're playing Call of Duty Warzone 3, or crossover with Modern Warfare 3, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm trying to go through the settings. The game is a little bit stuttery, actually, which is weird. It's usually really smooth. I'm playing at 1080p using the uh, Ultra Settings preset, normal textures, no depth of field, and with Fidelity FX CAS uh, sharpening up the image because it looks like crap if you don't use it. And guys, I have joined a couple of servers already also that water looks like crap and it's always a bit stuttery i don't know what to tell you <laughs> let's start counting our fps one percent lows are probably gonna be crap because we're seeing some frame time spikes i have never seen this happening this frequently aside from when call of duty modern warfare 2 and warzone 2 came out uh, the, it was really stuttery back then but and they fixed it and apparently it's kind of the same here in this system i Again, 16 FPS, 1% lows. This is worse than a GTX 1060 laptop that I tested from seven or eight years ago. It's really weird behavior, guys. Oh, there's a guy here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I got him. I got him. It's all good. It's all good. I can still play. Don't get me wrong. And if the stutters end up being fixed somehow... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it will be a good experience because it's getting 100 plus FPS on average, right? That's really good. Why was he carrying a dog? That's weird. But yeah, guys, maybe it's the drivers as well. Some people have told me that with these latest drivers, they were experiencing stuttering issues with AMD graphics cards. I, I can't tell for sure, but everything up until now has been really good, but this game is just broken, I guess, on this GPU. Now for an older title, but still very popular one, I got GTA 5 at 1080p using 2 times MSAA and the very high custom settings by myself. I don't like to use post effects at a higher value than normal because it introduces motion blur and bloom, and the grass quality is also set to high instead of very high or ultra because it looks much the same and it's way more intensive on the higher settings and well 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 let's start counting our fps how the turntables my friends compared to other mini pcs how the turntables right <laughs> it's much better oh, did i just kill a dog uh, it's an ugly one anyway. <laughs> Moving on, guys. This is a very smooth experience. But if you don't enable MSAA two times, it will be a very stuttery one. Because this game actually starts stuttering a lot if the FPS are very high. It has an engine cap at 188 frames per second. And I tried it without MSAA first. And I was reaching those values and 
it was kind of unplayable, you know. Now, for the most intensive area, here we have it dropping down into the 90s. Yeah, needless to say, this is gonna be a great experience in GTA 5. It's an old title at this point. Hello, Jack, how are you going? Yes, me too. I'm fine as well. Thank you very much. Go that way. I will kill Bob now. All right, first, let's go over here to the bushy areas. Yeah, very intensive areas, and it only drops into the low 80s, actually. Yeah, that's a little bit of a bigger drop than previously. And finally, goodbye, Bob. <laughs> Good stuff. You're free to go, Rex. Everything is fine now, and we can proceed to the next game. Now I'm playing Stutter Knight at 1080p resolution using DX12 and the high settings preset but with 3D resolution set to 100% and no nanite virtualized geometry which makes it so we don't have lumen as well and lumen is basically ray tracing which is very intensive so we want to keep that off. Guys I, I gotta mention this we're still here waiting for players you know in the pre-lobby area whatever you want to call it I don't know uh, but it's not stuttering. Usually it stutters like crazy in this part. <laughs> I also installed the streamed assets, by the way, in the game's uh, launch options or whatever. And that actually makes quite a bit of a difference in terms of the smoothness of the game. Has Epic actually fixed Fortnite in the meantime? I, I don't know, but this feels amazing right now. Oh my god, I'm so low HP at the moment. Ooh, somebody else is shooting at us! No, 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 no. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Oh boy. And heal myself. Yes, there you go. There we go. Look at the 1% lows. I haven't seen the 1% lows so close to the averages in this game in a really long time. And you know what? The game is still looking fantastic. The lighting still looks good enough, right? What the hell are you doing? What the? Come on, come on. Oh boy. Oh, that was close. There's another guy right there. Please don't spot me. Come on, okay, I'm good, yes, yes, go away, go away, buddy. He's trying to jump there, should we? Okay, no shields. Nice, we got another one. <laughs> can we jump this? Wait a second, wait a second. Let's go, let's go, yes, we can. There we go, it's like we're playing Forza right now. There's a boy right there. Wait, wait, wait. Kill the bastard, there it is. <laughs> Uh, it's just a bot, he only had a weapon. Let's fly away. There it is. Look at that, guys. 80s now. It should be dropping into the 70s in a little bit. Maybe. Or maybe not. It's it's just stable. Okay. <laughs> Damn, that's impressive. Wow. Mini PC right here. Okay, it's $1,000 mini PC. Super expensive, of course. But it's great. It, it, it's performing well. Okay, so now we're watching a Dota 2 match here, guys, at the 1080p resolution using the Vulkan API and the best looking settings preset. And you can see by the GPU utilization that it's nowhere near maxing out. So the CPU is actually the bottleneck here. CPU usage is also pretty low, but that's because this, the game itself can't use more cores uh, and threads on the 7840HS. The ones that it can use are maxing out. And if you had faster single core performance it would have more fps but the good news is you don't really need more fps in my opinion guys it works extremely well with 60 plus fps all of the time and we're getting 155 on average i'll still wait for a bit of a fight to go on you know like a team fight a bigger one than this oh boy another team fight happening let's go Yes, that's what I want to see, dropping down into the lower 100s at times, or 1-teens. Not a problem though, it's still gonna feel perfect here. Yeah, it's a lovely experience in Dota 2. Now we're playing Helldivers 2, which doesn't perform very well on AMD GPUs, unfortunately, compared to Nvidia and Intel even. But here we go, we're playing at 1080p resolution, native, using the high settings preset. Just gonna disable motion blur here. And this is it. Okay, yeah, this is... This is playable, guys. All right. It, it can be very enjoyable with these FPS, but I... I expected better coming from this GPU, you know. <laughs> uh, and if you look at the GPU utilization, it's hovering around 80 to 90%. That's exactly the same behavior as I saw when I installed the RX 6700 XT in my 7950 X3D system. Obviously, there wouldn't be any bottleneck there because there wasn't any bottleneck when I tried the 4070 Ti Super and 4070 Super in this game. Um, but 
yet the 6700 XT was still underutilized. I think it's down to the drivers. I have been told it's down to the drivers, and I think uh, there are some articles about it as well that say that it's down to the drivers. So there's that. Good news is I, I can play the game absolutely fine, and I have played the game absolutely fine with a lot of GPUs with 40 plus frames per second, and it doesn't stutter as well. Like the 1% lows are very similar to the averages there. So it is a nice experience and smooth one. It's just not 60 FPS. All right, guys. Guys, it's time for Rust. I don't usually include this game, but I should definitely include it more often because it's one of my favorites. And we're playing this one at 1080p resolution using high graphics quality, 100% resolution scale there, and the like middle of the road settings. Everything is set to the middle basically right here. These are the settings on the image effects and experimental are all turned off. Now I just started counting the FPS and I wish we could find a roach around here. Oh, wait a second. Is that a little chopper? Yes, it is a little chopper. Does it have fuel? N yes, it does have fuel. Oh boy, it works. <laughs> this is perfect. We can get out of here. Come on. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh, boy. Okay, okay, okay. Now go up, go up, up you go, up you go. Nope, I didn't mean to press space and get out of the thing. There we go. Let's find a big forest because that's where it's gonna drop the most using these settings at least. Um, also, bandit camp is usually very intensive. A lot of people say that it's the most intensive thing in this game. However, there is no bandit camp. At least I'm not seeing any here in this map. So here we are in the middle of a big forest, dense forest right here. And ooh, this is a 10 times server actually <laughs> interesting and finally right here we're actually fully gpu bound with a few stutters here and there i guess it's loading some things in the map basically um but yeah we can achieve 100 percent gpu utilization get around the same fps as we were seeing in the desert area so that's great well at least having a cpu bottleneck means something it means that once it becomes gpu bound you're gonna see the same fps <laughs> All right, now this area should be less GPU intensive and I don't think we need hazmat suits in this one. It's also stuttering a little bit too much. I'm not liking that, okay? Maybe because of the slight CPU bottleneck in these areas, it starts stuttering a little bit more than it would be on a fully GPU bound scenario. So locking the FPS would definitely fix that. Yeah, in this area, for example, it's not really as stuttery though. I haven't really seen a stutter ever since we got out of that place, so... Good stuff. It's going to be stable and playable above everything else. And a lot of fun. I really love Rust. So feel free to buy the game if you have something like this system. Oh my god. Oh, it feels stuttery as well. No. So we're playing slow field, of course. And we're at 1080p using medium settings, basically. FSR is disabled. I'm gonna use some FSR 3 with frame generation in a little bit, but... Yeah, this is kind of terrible, right? Look at that frame time graph. If I start counting it, I bet the 1% lows will be in the 20s. Let's see. Okay, 29, closer to 30 than I expected. But this is awful. It literally feels like the frame time graph. It is stuttery like hell. What? How? Seriously? Obviously, you can lock the FPS in this game and make it a lot smoother, I think. I'll try that. Okay, here we have it. 30 FPS lock in Starfield now. And yeah, the frame time can be fixed. It can be very smooth, as you can see. And now it feels... It actually it, it feels pretty crappy anyways <laughs> not gonna lie it feels even worse <laughs> i thought it would feel better 30 fps like flat frame time graph than the 40 fps with all of this happening in the frame time graph but no it, it really doesn't actually <laughs> 30 fps is so bad i'm happy that we could often reach 60 fps uh, in this video guys the hell is that guy doing anyway moving on oh wait looking at the guy and getting 60 fps it actually wait it's it's stuck at 60 fps what is going on with this game is it vsync yes vsync is on wait it fixed it why oh my god vsync was doing the exact opposite of what it should do what 
It was so stuttery with V-Sync. This game is so broken. Still, after like what? Six months? More than six months? What the heck is wrong with you, Slowfield? Holy crap. All right. Never mind all of the things that I did. You don't need to lock your FPS to, <laughs> to make it playable. Just use vsync off do not bother with that setting to get rid of the screen tearing play with screen tearing if you must because it's gonna give you a much smoother experience holy crap dude also as i'm sure a lot of people are aware this game looks kind of like crap it's not terrible by any means but uh, it's like a 2015 game or something <laughs> and it performs worse than some 2024 games that will come out this year probably and will look 10 times better but hey that's the bethesda magic right it's fine <laughs> Okay, well, at least here in one of the most intensive areas in the entire game, it manages 40 plus FPS all of the time. If you go to emptier worlds, you know, it will get you 60 plus. Now, we do still have the upscaling right here. We can use FSR 3. I'm not going to lower the resolution scale here and make it like FSR quality, which would be 66 or 67% resolution scale. I'll keep it at 100%, but I will use frame generation because at least DLSS quality Quality drops the visual fidelity by quite a bit uh, and enabling frame generation is actually much better than the LSS quality without FG in this title. Here the frame generation from AMD is kind of looking weird on the laser side of the weapon like what the hell it goes black sometimes that's pretty effed up you know what the okay okay but it's a minor thing it's a minor thing that you can live with by not using weapons with lasers or maybe going third person as well it works as you can see yes the input lag is there it's still the same input lag as i was seeing with like 40 fps maybe even slightly worse than that but at least the smoothness factor is much improved and if you're not really playing this game competitively <laughs> <laughs> um, and you don't require fast reactions and you don't care if you're very very accurate with your guns and stuff uh, you can play with 60 plus fps all of the time with medium settings 1080p very close visuals to the real deal at native you know a few artifacting issues once again especially on the laser site there yeah, that's pretty rough actually um but again, it's it's not that big of a deal. So just enjoy it like this if you must play Starfield, the slow field. But me, myself, I would just avoid the game <laughs> altogether. There's no need to put up with crappy performance like this and a crappy game like this anyways. Now I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p resolution using TAA on high and the high settings preset and this is actually quite impressive here in Hogsmeade that we're getting around like 90 frames per second with a laptop CPU because this is a really really CPU intensive area uh, in this game you know. It is a bit stuttery but it's completely normal here in Hogwarts Legacy. All you need to do to get rid of the stuttering is lock the FPS, but make sure you do it with a third-party program because if you do it in the game, it won't really get smoother for some reason. It's pretty weird. It's already dipped down into the 50s. There we go. It's actually consistently in the 50s in this area, unfortunately, but it feels nice enough, you know? I don't really have a problem with this performance, and I would actually choose to play this on the high settings with this configuration. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the 69 on average <laughs> i was really hoping that we could get that so maybe if i just fly away like this <laughs> get 100 fps almost yes 69 fps on average there we go my friends perfect stuff <laughs> and now let's move on to one of the best optimized games out there now and that's forza horizon 5 1080p resolution four times msaa using the ultra settings preset but i changed these two here to high because they impact VRAM a lot. And the GPU was actually running out of VRAM and stuttering because of it. All right, here we go. Start counting the FPS. Look at that, guys. Look at how beautiful this game looks with these settings and how high the FPS are. 150 right now. Obviously, we're just in the middle of nowhere right now, so it's not that intensive to run this here. But I'm going to go to the city area as usual, and then the FPS are going to drop like crazy there especially when getting out of the tunnel but 
something tells me that the 6650M won't have a problem with that. And finally, the city area. We're getting down into the 120s. Still not a problem. It's still going to be a high refresh rate experience. Not that you need it in a game like this. I honestly would just lock it to 60 and save some power. Wait a second. Why is this guy going like that? Um, are you okay? What? I went to go to the tunnel, but what is going on with this one? <laughs> you know what? One of these days, I should probably try to make the benchmark run in Forza backwards. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do next <laughs> in one of these uh, Forza Horizon 5 videos, so stay tuned in. Anyway, drop to the low 100s outside of the tunnel, or getting out of the tunnel, actually. Um, and that's the most intensive thing, so it's safe to say it's never going to drop from 100 FPS. And it is a buttery, buttery smooth experience. And it's finally conclusion time, and I'll still have Assassin's Creed Mirage and Rainbow Six Siege running right here in their benchmark runs, while we talk a little bit about the little minis for from HX100G right here. So, should you buy something like this? Well, I guess if you're into mini PCs and small PCs like this one, this is probably one of the best that you can get because it has that dedicated RX 6650M, but it is overpriced, okay? There's no way around it. You could buy a laptop with like an RTX 4060, the same CPU, for around the same price or like 50 to 100 bucks more expensive in the case of the 4060, that's what I've been seeing at least and obviously that 4060 is better than the GPU inside of this thing, so it will also perform better. But I think these mini PCs or small PCs target a different audience. I've seen a lot of people interested in mini PCs in the recent years. And again, for those specific people, this might make sense. I mean, the cooling solution is better than a laptop anyways, and it's quiet in uh, operation and under load. But I, I, I just can't really recommend it at a thousand bucks, guys. That's, that's obvious, right? If it was like 700, maybe 800 bucks maximum, it would be a buy with the configuration that I have here, 32 gigs and one terabyte SSD. But at a thousand, yeah, just skip it. These mini PCs need to drop in price, basically. They're very expensive for what they are. And until there's laptops in the market that come similarly specced with an extra monitor, keyboard and mouse, they just don't really make that much sense. So please, Minis Forum, if you can uh, drop the price on these things, that would be amazing, of course. And that goes for the other mini PC manufacturers as well. So that's been it. Thanks very much for watching this video. Expect a few more videos coming, testing games separately on this thing as well. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.